Okay, let's talk about everyone's favorite thing to do, and of course that is to solve math word problems. And, uh, you know, of course I'm being a little bit funny, and uh, most of you out there are probably saying, hey, Mr. YouTube math man, just stick to the math, not the comedy. Because in actuality, most people, when they think of math word problems, kind of have this kind of look on, them, on their face, and they're like, oh my goodness, you know, it's bad enough that I have to do math, and now you're talking about a math word problem. Well, listen, ma a, uh, math word problems are nothing more than an application of uh, mathematics. Okay, why do you learn math? Well, you learn math to solve problems, and uh, you should be able to solve a basic problem like this if you're at the middle school, definitely at the high school level in terms of mathematics. But uh, let me explain the problem, and then we're going to go ahead and solve it. So we have a car here, and this car traveled 10 miles in 14 minutes. Okay, so the car is traveling. It uh, covered 10 miles in 14 minutes. We want to know how far is this car how far is this car going to go in an hour and a half if it doesn't change its speed so that is the problem and there's two approaches that you could take uh, to solve this problem there's probably an, uh, other approaches but I'm going to show you two main ways um, two good ways that you could solve this particular problem and you're going to need to be able to solve this problem again if you're at any kind of math level pre-algebra and beyond so if you want to go ahead and tackle the problem I would definitely encourage you to pause the video and put your answer into the comment section just make sure that you just don't guess here you know, uh, write out your steps as if you were going to turn this in on a quiz or test. Remember in math, uh, most teachers, if, if you uh, give them uh, the answer, even though it's the right answer, if you don't have the work, they're not going to give you the credit. You need the justification behind it. So uh, if you're going to do this problem, you know, do it the right way. Uh, even if you get it wrong, at least you'll understand your logic, whether it was correct or not. But I'm going to get to all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, I've been teaching math for decades, and there's one thing that uh, I really come to a real solid belief about, and that is this. All students can be successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, it requires uh, the student to be willing to do the work. Okay, so if you're struggling in math, and you're not willing to do the work, you'll never be successful in mathematics. So you got to be willing to do the work. So that's part one. The second part is students need a ton of clear and understandable instruction. They need to be taught uh, math in a way they like and understand. And that's where I, I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, definitely check out my math help program. Now, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test with a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam. There's a ton of exams out there that people have to take. I can help you uh, prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, my middle and high school math courses were just recently voted number one by a major homeschool publisher. Very excited about that. Um, Award and if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get going and uh, talk about how to solve this problem. Well, let's uh, go ahead and just kind of give you two options here. I'm going to solve this problem uh, using both ways. So the first um, thing that you want to know uh, when you're dealing with a rate and distance problem, any kind of motion problem in mathematics. So if you have like a vehicle or an airplane or boat, it doesn't make a difference. You're talking about distance and there's time and there's uh, possibly speed involved or velocity involved. You want to know this formula right here. Okay, This is something that you want to commit to your long-term memory. So it goes like this, rate times, rate multiplied by time is equal to distance. Okay, you need to know that. So in this particular problem, I don't know how fast the car is going, but uh, if I did know that, then I could solve, I could figure this problem out by determining um, the velocity of the car, the speed of the car. And I could do that because here, uh, rate times time equals distance. I have the time, okay? I know that this car uh, went 14 minutes and it covered 10 miles uh, in those 14 minutes. So I could solve for the rate, the velocity. And then from there, I know that um, I do have this time here of 1.5 hours. I could figure out 
the distance that way. Okay, so if you want to take this approach, okay, that's perfectly fine. And I think uh, most math teachers would have no issue with that. Okay, now by the way, too, if you feel like, oh, okay, now I know what to do, go ahead and pause the video and follow through and actually do this problem. Um, I think that's the best way to get the um, best benefit from this video. But let's talk about another way you can do this, and that is to set up a proportion. Okay, now what's the definition of a, a proportion? Well, a proportion is two equal fractions, okay? So if you wanna know more about uh, proportions or uh, all this stuff, I'm gonna give you a couple suggestions. One, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel you can follow through and learn more about proportions, or you, uh, you might wanna check out one of my algebra courses where I really get into this stuff pretty heavy duty. But uh, we could set up a proportion, i.e. Uh, two equal fractions, because we do have the time uh, this car traveled 14 minutes and we do have the distance so we could set up a two equal fractions time over distance is equal to time over distance that's a proportion and um, and then we could solve this problem that way as well so I'm actually going to um, solve this problem both ways so let's get going here and we'll use the proportion um, method first okay so here uh, we have our vehicle again our little minivan or whatever it is it went uh, in 14 minutes it covered 10 miles so we want to know this the, this is the time in uh, 1.5 hours how far how many or how many miles is this uh, car going to travel so again we want to set up a proportion uh, using this technique so that's two equal fractions right time we could put it like time over distance or distance over time uh, that's fine as well but notice here if i put the time in the numerator spot on this fraction i'm going to have to put it in the numerator spot here and the distance as in the denominator the distance has to be in a denominator here so anytime you're set up a proportion you have to have the same units of measure so i'm going to uh, talk about that right now so Let's go ahead and uh, set up a um, proportion right now. So we can kind of state it this way. Uh, for every 14 minutes, okay, the car went 10 miles, right? 14 minutes per um, 10 miles. Now, notice my units of measure. I have time, okay? My time is, again, in the numerator. It's 14 minutes. And my distance is in the denominators. That's 10 miles. So I want to know how many miles this car went. So here's miles down here. So I don't know how many miles this car is going to travel. So that's going to be X miles. And then notice up here, um, how many miles is this car going to go in 1.5 hours? So again, this is time, okay? Time expressed in minutes. And then here I have time, 1.5 hours exp expressed in hours. So this is a bit of a problem because in proportions, you need to have the exact same units of measure. So even though we're talking... Uh, about time if this is minutes then this over here has to be minutes or if this is minutes I have to change this to hours either we uh, we can have hours and hours or minutes and minutes it doesn't make a difference uh, as long as the units uh, are the same okay so what I'm gonna do in this particular problem is I'm going to um, change the hours okay so here I have 14 minutes per 10 miles I'm gonna change uh, 1.5 hours I'm gonna rewrite that so it's uh, in terms of minutes. So an hour and a half, 1.5 hours is, of course, 90 minutes, right? So 60 minutes in one hour. Then I got half an hour, which is 30 minutes, and that's 90 minutes, just so we're crystal clear about that. So now I have my proportion. So I have 14 minutes uh, per uh, every 10 miles. So in 90 minutes, how many miles is this car going to travel? So this is the proportion that we want to set up. And the lovely thing about proportions is this. Uh, again, uh, a proportion is two equal fractions. So let's take a look at the fraction 1 half and 3 over 6. These fractions are equal. Okay, now 3 6 I can reduce. But the main thing you need to know about proportions is that the cross product is equal. In other words, when I cross multiply this way, the uh, answer is going to be the same. So, for example, 1 times 6 right here is the same thing as 2 times 3. 6 is equal to 6. That's a property of proportions. Okay, again, you're going to need to know a little bit about proportions to solve this problem in this manner. But uh, again, this is something that you should know at this level of mathematics. So, let's go ahead and solve this proportion now. Uh, so, we're going to take this 14, we'll just kind of ignore the units of measure. 
because um, we want to solve for x, okay? So let me actually write this this way. This is uh, 14 over 10 is equal to 90 over x. I want to solve for x because x miles, that's how far this thing went. So I'm going to use the cross product, all right? So 14 times x is 14x, and then 10 times uh, 90 is, of course, 900, but we'll write it uh, 90 times 10 so you can see what's going on here. So 14x is equal to 900. So to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 14. So 900 divided by 14 is approximately 64.28. So x is equal to 64.28. But what is x? Well, that's the miles, okay? So that is the answer. So in uh, 90 minutes or 1.5 hours, this uh, car went approximately 64.28 miles. Okay, so that is method number one. And if you got this right, if you're if you're about 64 points and you have a, some other decimal that's pretty close to that, then that is correct. So that's very, very good. Matter of fact, let me give you a little happy face if you got this correct. But let's move on and talk about the other approach that we could have taken. And that is to use our rate uh, times time equals distance formula. All right, so here is the problem. Again, we pretty much know all the same information. So uh, let's go ahead and, and get the speed of this vehicle. That's one thing we don't know, okay? So we want to get the velocity uh, or the speed or the rate. Those are pretty much all interchangeable kind of words. There's some technical differences uh, there, but you don't have to worry about that. If you hear uh, the rate, that is talking about the speed or the velocity of something. So let's go ahead and solve for the rate. So here we know again that our time is 14 minutes, okay? In other words, uh, this car uh, traveled 14 minutes and it covered its distance of 10 miles. Okay, so here I want to solve for the rate. So uh, rate times time is equal to distance. Now, at this point, we're going to run into the same kind of um, issue in terms of units of measure. So let's think about it. Uh, when we're talking about vehicles, what do we like to measure our time uh, or uh, speed in? Okay. Well, typically our speed is measured in like, at least in the United States here, miles per hour. So that per, miles per hour, let me write this here, uh, miles per hour is the same thing. That little uh, P right there means division. So that's really miles divided by hours or miles per hour. Okay, we write it this way, but uh, miles per hour means mile div miles divided by hours. So here... Um, I'm going to take this to solve for the rate. I'm going to be dividing by minutes. I would get miles miles per minute in this uh, manner. Okay, so because we're, the question's asking us how far did this car go in terms of uh, 1.5 hours, we're either going to have to work in minutes or we're going to have to work in hours. Something's going to have to change. So I'm going to change my 14 minutes because I am used to seeing speed for like a vehicle in terms of miles per hour. Let's go ahead and convert those that 14 minutes into hours. Again, you, uh, whether you use this formula or the proportion method, you're going to have to get those units of measure uh, the same, but this time we'll switch minutes to hours. So the way you do that is divide by 60, right? So we take minutes and divide it by 60, you get uh, hours. So um, 14 minutes is, is approximately 0.233 hours. Okay, so instead of um, solving this uh equation here, this formula for, uh, in terms of its rate by using minutes, now we have hours. So 14 minutes is the same thing as 0.233 hours. Okay. That's, uh, uh, 10 miles stays the same. And now when I uh, divide, okay, I need to divide both sides of the equation by 0.233. That will give me the rate. So 10 divided by 0.233. Of course, use your calculator. This car is traveling about 42.9 miles per hour, okay? So that's information that we can definitely use to uh, figure out how far it's going to go in 1.5 hours. So let's go ahead and figure that out now. Okay, so again, this vehicle now is going about 42.9 miles per hour. So rate times time equals distance. Remember, the question is how far is this car going to go in 1.5 hours? So the time now is 1.5 hours. So here's the speed of the vehicle. It's traveling for 1.5 hours. 
Uh, so if this car traveling at about 42.9 miles per hour uh, for an hour and a half, we just multiply these together because I'm dealing with miles in hours, and here I have hours, my answer is going to be in miles. Okay, so here when I multiply these two decimals together, I get 64.35, and uh, there is a bit of a difference between uh, this answer here, 64.28. That's that's just because I'm rounding off a bit, but uh, this is a uh, correct answer as well. So if you were in my math class and you gave me either one of these answers, I would give you um, uh, probably give you full credit because I'm seeing the process laid out. Okay. So the main thing here is this, when we're multiplying, let's just make this super uh, clear. Okay. How we ended up with miles. Remember, this is miles per hour. Well, I could write it this way, miles per hour, and I'm multiplying by hours. So that's really hours, or like an hour, miles per hour, over one. So when I multiply fractions, what's going on here? Well, I'm going to end up, end up with miles times an hour over, because remember, when you multiply fractions, you go this way, over an hour, and here, my hours cross cancel, okay? And I'm left with miles. That's why we have miles uh, here as our uh, unit of measure. So um, when you're doing these type of problems, you know, you're going to have to know how to solve basic equations, work with formulas, and especially be very mindful when it comes to units of measure, okay? All right, so if uh, you got this problem fully correct uh, and you're like, yes, I got this problem right, I'd have to give you your happy face and a good old 1984 flat top haircut and A plus and 100%. Nice job, okay? Uh, if you didn't get this right and you're just like, hey, I didn't get it right because I'm trying to learn something, well, that's the whole point of the video. And now if you understand, that's excellent. And uh, you might want to consider uh, smashing a like button if this video did help you out in some tiny way. That would uh, be very much appreciated. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, maybe you will consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos from basic math to advanced math, um, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.